3D is available in PowerPoint. No glasses required. Here we've got a lovely little building. It looks like a picture, but it's not. If I go into edit mode and then select it, you'll see that you get the regular white grab handles, but also this funky thing in the middle. That allows you to spin this model around so you can see all the different aspects of it. Now, there are some really interesting things that you can do with 3D models, but unfortunately, that live spinning, whilst you're in slideshow mode, is not one of them. But I'll show you some options in a second. First, how do you get these things? Well, you can go to the Inserts tab on the ribbon, and then in the Illustrations section of the middle here, you can choose 3D models. There you can choose to insert a 3D model that you have locally, so you can download these things or create them yourself, or you can go to the stock 3D models. And here you have a library of 3D models built into PowerPoint. So you can now access a huge range of different things, either scrolling through the different categories or searching at the top. If you want to find something, let's choose Microsoft products, for example, and then you'll see the selection of different options that are available here, you can choose whatever you like. So select the one that you want, choose insert, and it will appear nicely in your slide. Now, once you've got this, you need to be able to do something with it, and there are a few new options. Perhaps most obviously is if you go to the animations tab on the ribbon, there are new animations available just for 3D models. If you go to add animation on the right hand side, you'll see that there are five new animations here an entrance animation in green, an exit animation in red, and three emphasis animations in yellow. For example, if you wanted to animate something into the slide, you can choose Arrive, which is going to then rotate the view as it comes in. But you have a new set of options available with this by going to the Animations tab and then Effect Options in the middle. So clicking on this drop down, you can now choose the direction, whether it's left, right, up or down, or clockwise or counterclockwise. You can also choose the intensity of it and the rotation axis, whether it's on the view that you have at the moment or on the axis of the object itself. So right now that doesn't really matter because you're looking at it straight on. But if you were to reposition it like that, for example, now if I choose to do through the view center, you see it comes in, in one direction. But if I would choose the object center, you'll see it comes through slightly differently. So you get different effects based on how you have positioned the model and then which of these effect options you choose. And so you can start to build up a story by having it appear, by having it move around, for example, and then you can have it disappear if you need to. And that's great, but actually perhaps what's more interesting is the ability to, well, not use animation at all. What I'd like to do is open up the thumbnails here on the left and now duplicate the slide using Control and D. And now you have two slides that show the same thing. But on the second slide, I'm going to take this object and move it around like this. So let's talk about the evacuation plan, for example. So I want to highlight here the top. And then I'm going to make it much larger. So let's increase the size of it now. So you're going to focus in on just that portion of the top. And then let's take it further and duplicate the slide again using Control and D and shift this around to talk about the fact that you need to go into the emergency stairwell just there like that. And then I'm going to duplicate the slide again, move this all the way down to the bottom like that and duplicate the slide again and spin it around once more and then also change the sizing so that it's now a chunk smaller so you can see more of the building there like that. Great. Why have I done that? Because if you select all of these slides that are duplicates, go to the Transitions tab on the ribbon and choose the new Morph Transition, what PowerPoint will do is recognize that this object, this 3D model, is the same on all slides, and then in slideshow mode, it will now seamlessly morph from one to the next, and you can then go up to the roof. And then you can go around to the emergency stairwell and down the emergency stairwell and then all the way around to the other side of the building, which is where the evacuation meeting point is. And so now you can start to really bring your 3D models to life with effective visual storytelling by splitting it out over multiple slides and using the morph transition to help you to tell that story. Now you can take it even further because this little chap here is an astronaut, clearly, but hang on, that's interesting. 
Not only do you have this new grab handle in the middle, but this little play icon, what's that? This is an animated 3D model. And so PowerPoint supports animations that are built into 3D models. So if you were to go to the 3D model tab on the ribbon up here, you'll see over on the left hand side, this play 3D function, which gives you in this case, different scenes that are built in. So this model, which is again available from the PowerPoint download options, gives you regular scene one where the astronaut is just floating in space, but also this one standing around, taking a look at the new environment. You've got this one here, scene three, where they're saying hello, and then scene four, a nice heroic run there. And so with that, you again have more options available to you. I'm going to keep with scene one there. And then you think, well, that scrolling effect was interesting, where you're kind of moving from one to another with morph. But I've got a starry background here. Well, let's start to imagine more complex scenes with parallax scrolling, for instance. So I've now got this slide. I'm going to duplicate it again using Control and D on the thumbnails. And on the second slide, let's spin the astronaut around there like that but also note that I've got this starry background just as a picture, which is larger than the slide. So now it's up to the top left, but on the second slide, I'm gonna move it so that it's focused on the bottom right-hand corner. And so now across these two slides, you've got the same astronaut and you've got the same picture, but with different spins in different positions. So now if you go to the transitions tab and choose the morph transition over here on the left, then in slideshow mode, you get a rather wonderful parallax scrolling effect to go from one down to the other, and then also back again if you want to. So you can do really interesting things, combining 3D models and parallax scrolling with the morph technique and all sorts of other elements as well. Well worth investigating to see what kind of stories you can bring to life.